Okay, so today we're talking about dream homeschool spaces and admittedly, I'm feeling a little bit cheeky. Hey, welcome back to The Commonplace. My name is Autumn. I will be your host for this tour through dream homeschools in small spaces. That is the title of today's episode. If you live in a tiny home, you may roll your eyes at me, but if you live in a normal home, we'll call them, then I think what I have to say is going to be helpful. Now, you should know by now if you hang out in any arm of The Commonplace, whether that be the podcast, the Patreon, the YouTube, do I do anything else? I don't like Instagram, not really. But uh, you should know that I always like to come in with philosophy first. And usually there's a slight tone of cheekiness to it. And that little bit of cheekiness is not to poke fun necessarily at modernity, although I do think that poking fun is a good way to reveal things. But it's because I like to have fun. I very much like to laugh. And I hope you wanna laugh with me today. So we are actually going to talk about, for real, dream homeschooling spaces. And I promise it really will be helpful. I actually will give you some tips on homeschooling in a small space because I myself live in a very old home in the city. It's quirky, it's got all that kind of charm, but it's not conducive to normal expectations of modern life. I don't know if you know this, fun side historical note here. Houses were taxed more based on windows and closets way back in the day, at least in Pennsylvania, where I live. I'm not sure if that's everywhere, but I think it's a general rule or was a general rule back then. And so like most city homes, like most really old homes, I do not have closets really. We have very small closets upstairs in the bedrooms. Most people would have wardrobes up there, which is actually what we do in one room. Um, but we don't have any closets downstairs. So when you think about storage and homeschool storage and things like that, there are no closets in this house. There's no homeschooling space in this house. So what I actually have to say for ways that we homeschool, I think will be helpful, but I'm not gonna let you by without talking about the philosophy. From the start here, I'm not hating on homeschool rooms. If you have a lovely, beautiful homeschool room, something worth being on Instagram, I'm actually not making fun of that. I think that's great. If you have the space and you wanna make it lovely, do. Matter matters, beauty matters cool. But if you don't, this video is more for you, which is the boat I'm in. Now, the thing about us moderns is that we are materialists. We think about materials, we see materials, we think that when we put something together, what matters is the material aspect of it. And materials do matter. In fact, I'm going to link to um, an event slash workshop slash webinar, I don't really know what to call it, called Consider the Cause um, with Brandy Vinsel and my friend Amanda Foss. They just did it a couple weeks ago and they talk about Aristotle's four causes, how you can apply them to educational philosophies. And one of the four causes is the material cause. It actually does matter what materials you use to educate your children. That's part of it. But for us, that kind of becomes the only thing, right? That's why when you follow homeschooling moms on the internet, most of them are just telling you what to buy in order to have their homeschool. Here are the notebooks we use. Here's what's in our nature pack. Here's how we set up our art cart, whatever it is. That's primarily the bulk of the content because that's how we think about things. Have right stuff, get right homeschool. Stuff is important. It actually is but that's not how we get right homeschool. There are three other causes. Now, I understand if you actually have a real problem with your homeschool setup, you need to brainstorm a solution. That's just meeting a need. If your children cannot actually work at the table size or with the table size that you have, you're gonna have to figure out something to do. Maybe one goes and works at a desk in their room, maybe one sits on the floor in the living room, whatever it is, there are real problems. So I do understand that sometimes changing up your homeschool space bringing in a new piece of furniture, changing up what's on the wall can actually be helpful. But we're speaking generally. And generally, a perfect homeschool, dream homeschool room is actually not made only or even primarily with the materials. Told you I was feeling cheeky. So I'm ready to blow your mind now. What is it that makes a dream homeschool? It's your atmosphere, your discipline, and your life. The three instruments that you as a mother teacher actually have in the education of your children, and I take these three instruments and apply it to all of motherhood. These are the three things I think about with every problem that I face. What's our atmosphere? What's our habit? What's, what kind of living ideas are going into my children's minds? Um, and that's all you actually have. You could have every wooden hand manipulative carved from a tree in Narnia, sold for $1,000 on Etsy, and you could still have an undreamy <laughs> homeschool room. And that is because we have to primarily focus on those three instruments, atmosphere, discipline, and life. So when we think about our atmosphere, I know you're probably thinking, but isn't that all the stuff around us? Isn't that the botanical wall posters and the chalkboard and the nature backpacks? Yes, except that atmosphere when Mason talks about it is learning to rightly relate 
to the things around you, to God, to people, and to things. Like, you do actually have to learn that it is not a right relation to the white wall to draw on it with the red crayon, which one of my kids did very recently. And the thing about atmosphere is moms actually spend a lot of time thinking about how we decorate our homes, how we want our homes to feel, but what actually comes out, what your children learn from, what they pick up on in their ordinary home life, which is a very good thing for children in a healthy home, is the is the unspoken things, the unconscious loves that we have, that we hold dear, that come out through our minds, our mouths, and our hands. You can say that you love a bunch of stuff, but what you actually love is what forms your atmosphere. And that's why your children know, because children are such good hypocrisy meters, aren't they? They know that you may say you love truth, goodness, and beauty, but the only way you have a good day is if you check off every item on your to-do list, right? Don't worry. We all have our own things we're working on. This is about sanctification over the course of a lifetime, is it not? But the thing is that we need to actually think about our atmosphere. What are we setting the tone in our homes? What do we truly love? Do we come to the feast cheerful and excited to share with our children? Do we come and we're biting everyone's heads off and we're stressed out and we're anxious or all these other things that's actually going to impact your homeschool, your dream homeschool space a lot more than if you've been able to buy every beautiful puffin book cover of the classics. The second thing, of course, is going to be our discipline, which is Mason's word for habits. What are the habits of the homeschool room? This could be as simple as, do your kids know how to lay out the materials and clean up the materials at the end of the day? Um, I've heard it so many times, I think it's so true. It does not just matter that you clean up maybe an arts and craft activity, but also how you clean it up. Are you a cheerful helper? If your children have habits that make them cheerful, that will add to your homeschool room. The same is true for you, of course. If you have cheerful habits, it will make the homeschool room a dream space. You can have habits that have formed because as Mason says, habits will form. They'll just be either good or bad. Um, habits will form. And if you have a lot of bad habits running in your homeschool with attitudes, with service, with actual like habits of attention in your lessons, your homeschool can be insufferable. You can actually let your child live in a state of bad habits to the point where they make the home inhospitable. So you actually do really need to spend time, particularly during the summer and between school years is a great time to do this, forming good habits for the school year. Habits can make or break a homeschool room. And then lastly, there's life, right? Your generous curriculum. We try to give our children a diet of living ideas constantly for mind, for body, for soul. That is the point of this curriculum. It's the point of the classical tradition. It's what Mason was getting at when she talked about living ideas. The, the thing about living ideas is that they do not die. They continue on and on and will forevermore. It's why you can find them all the way back at the beginning of classical tradition and then trace them through to today. Like we still are pursuing truth, goodness, and beauty. It's what our minds, hearts, and souls want. It's what we're always looking for. And of course, in our education, we train a child to rightly understand those things, to rightly pursue those things, and to have just sentiments for those things. But what we are doing in the day-to-day -day is laying that feast before them. We want to make sure that the things we give our children are bringing new life to their minds and souls. That is the dream of the homeschool room, that we are all being formed towards God by the things that we repeatedly think, love, and do. And so I'm just gonna tell you, I have a video about why we chose the CMEC for our curriculum. I adore it, I could not speak more highly of it. I have their business cards in my purse to, to give to moms at the playground when I start talking about it. You guys hear that? It's like a dinosaur, but I know it's just some creation my children have made in the backyard. <laughs> common mom every time there's a common mom moment because I do life with my children all of it all the time they're always they're always here I'm always here where was I okay anyways that's the that's the hope of the dream homeschools that we're all becoming all of us are becoming more of what we ought to be and that is the ideal type in the classical tradition if you don't know about it so okay let's pivot here to the actual practical things here because like I said we live in a small city house um, our bedrooms are for sleeping there's some books upstairs, but we really do not use anything but the bottom floor for most of our most of our day, right? Everything happens down here, and down here is probably less than 800 square feet, um, and that's, I mean, we're talking kitchen, living room, dining room. He's the piano behind me. We have a bunch of other instruments. The kids play the strings. We've got guitars, mandolins, like all sorts of things around here, and the reason why that works in a small space, and my very first tip to you, is to blur the lines of school. Um, the classical tradition, I joke that when you fall through the classical wardrobe, you cannot go back. You cannot unsee what you have seen. The entire world is enchanting and opens up in a fuller, more sacramental way. All of life has order and meaning. It's 
amazing. Welcome to the classical world. However, it means that everything is very blurred all of a sudden. Like when we're reading, are we reading because we are doing school or are we just reading because reading is an act of leisure that is a humanizing way to spend your time and changes your mind and your, your affections? Are we on the trail because we're doing scouting and nature study or are we just out here because we like to be outside surrounded by beauty. It's a comfort to our souls. Everything starts to kind of blur and you don't really know what is happening in a formal, in a formal way and a formal not. Now, granted, I'm in the early years of formal education. There are times where that starts to pivot, I know, but I'm not there yet and I'm not really speaking to that yet. So that's where we are right now. But um, the, first, the first tip is to blur the lines. So that can be done in a couple of ways. We use our dining room table. Like I said, we do not have a dedicated school room. That is fine with me, I actually don't want one. Well, that's a story for another day, but we work at our dining room table. Um, that's right, actually right behind me, directly next to the piano. So it's literally, the, we're in my living room right now. You can see the kitchen through the door back there where it gets white and bright because we have a bunch of windows back there. And this is where we do everything. And so our dining room table is our main workspace. Right next to our dining room table, which I have some B-roll running now, um, is our huge chalkboard wall, which I saw many years ago, actually before I was even a mom, I was following Bethany Douglas. I've been following her homeschooling journey since before we had kids, I knew we'd be homeschooling and I loved the way that she talked about it and the way she was doing homeschool. And they had this big, beautiful chalkboard wall in their workspace and I knew one day I just had to have that. For me, that is literally right next to our dining room table, but that's fine because we like to have our full life bustling around us at all, at all times. Second thing, keep books actually on your bookshelf. Don't feel like you need to hide them away or they need to be in some special basket. Our books for school are on our bookshelves just like normal books because they're actual living books. We don't have a stack of textbooks that we're working through. We have really good literature and really lovely books that we use for our formal lessons. And so they live happily on our bookshelves. Um, we need more bookshelves. Piles of books are going everywhere. I'm about to just completely have someone, I was gonna say me, I can't rip it out. Someone in this house rip out a radiator and we'll just go without heat this winter so that I can have more bookshelves. <laughs> or up here we have this high area up here that I wanna put a bookshelf and I want to put a ladder because I will have a Beauty and the Beast library before I die. So we have a letter tray. Actually, it's an old letter tray that I found on Facebook Marketplace. Great place to find things. Um, it has all these little cubbies and stuff. We're using that for all of our nature study finds. We hang up our artist prints and our timetable on string. It's like fun, it looks festive. Um, we have our century timeline across the top. We can talk about it, add to it. Of course, our instruments are all around us. Um, when we think about actually how we decorate, we generally do just say we decorate with like books and instruments because I don't know where else you'd put everything. Like it would just be a lot of stuff everywhere. And like I said, I don't have closets and I live in a small house. And so you have to be smart about these things. Blur the lines, let your materials, let the things you're learning, the handicrafts your kids are working on, be the things that make up your home's decor slash their atmosphere. Love a good basket. So we have baskets for each of our handicraft projects. Um, they actually do live downstairs in the basement because my younger sons would love to handicraft unsupervised whenever they could. So they are just down in the basement where we have like some shelves and I just pull the basket that we need for that particular handicraft. I don't do this, but I've actually seen and think it's a neat idea to use a basket for each day of the week. So you have all your supplies for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in five separate baskets and you can just pull that basket. If you're in a very small space, um, that might be a great way to do that. Also people use the rolling cart. I know I've seen a lot of moms on Instagram talking about how they'll roll their cart wherever they need to be in the room. Is three tiers usually, you can get them at Target or Ikea, and they have everything they need just right there. So we also keep our table basket, which holds things like colored pencils, graphite pencils, um, writing pencils, scissors, glue, ruler, that sort of stuff. And so I can set it down in the middle of the table, all the kids can grab from it, and then they all know how to clean it back up because everything's nicely organized. You'll see in there, there's some glass jars. That's definitely part, there's like an aesthetic to Mason. We can't pretend there's not. On some level, it's very grounded and she would have favored higher quality natural materials. So that's where that sort of natural aesthetic comes from. However, it's gone a little haywire, I would say. You can also definitely homeschool very well with Crayola markers. Guys, <laughs> don't go crazy in the dream homeschool world because you could easily go crazy. Okay, so that's it. Those are some helpful tips. I hope they help you. I hope ultimately that you realize building the dream homeschool, whether you're in a small space, a teeny space, or a humongous, beautiful space that I would drool over like an old library with lots of moody colors, huge windows, old work table on like the coast of Scotland, if that's you, please invite me over. But also if you have that dream homeschool room, which is my dream homeschool room, you're still going to need to build a life within that room that feeds the mind, bodies, and souls of all of you. 
of all of your children and of you. That's how you build the dream homeschool. So I'm gonna be back next time because I am loving working on this formal lesson series. We're actually gonna be talking about how you lay the feast in the super early years. So pre-formal lessons, how do you lay that feast? What in the world do you do when you have boys who like to make fart jokes and hang upside down from stuff and eat snacks all day? How do you actually lay a feast for those guys too? Because I'm doing that simultaneously with my other, with my oldest. And we have also been doing that for the last five years with her. And I think our transition into formal lessons is going to be really lovely because of that. And I know how much it's formed me as a mom, so I can't wait to share. Go ahead, like, subscribe. Just do it, it helps everyone out. Make sure that you find the new content, helps me keep producing it. And I will see you next time.